Hey y'all, uh, Adam here, CarStio72. I'm going to talk a little bit about brake pads and brake fluid today. Um, try to not make it too long, but this is going to be more than 10 minutes. Um, like and subscribe to my channel. I'm getting up there in likes and or subscriptions, so uh, keep me going here. I'm pretty motivated to make videos that hopefully are helpful for folks. All right, so look, brake pad questions or braking questions come up so often in forums and Facebook groups and in group chats about what brakes I should run. I went to Tale of the Dragon Man and my brakes faded. And so, or I'm on the track and I'm having braking problems. And so I thought I would just give you some basic information about brakes because it is a common question. And we're going to kind of do this in a couple different topics. So we're going to talk about brake size, your braking technique, the brake fluid you're using, and finally, um, the brake pads you're using, which are probably the most important variable all right so brake size look big brake kits look awesome i have a big brake kit on my car they're very expensive and so um, in terms of bang for your buck with braking even on the track brake a big brake kit is probably the lowest uh on the on the bottom of the list it's a lot of money um, and, and really, what does brake size do for you? A lot of people think, I believe, that they think that the larger brake rotor gives you more leverage and stops sooner. And that is false. I have some data I will put up uh, in this video at the end that will show me stopping on a 312 millimeter factory brake on the all track or the non performance pack GTI on my sport wagon uh, compared to a big brake kit. Uh, on similar tires and guess what they stop exactly the same distance and when you change to a stickier tire they stop shorter it's tires if you can lock your brakes or engage APS your brakes are big enough you don't need a big brake kit to go drive on Till the Dragon or even really for when you're getting started on the track um, what brake size does for you it's it's just a heat sink the more physical material that's there, the more heat your brakes will absorb and handle before they fade. And so what big brake kits do is if you took a, if we took that same uh, setup I had doing some 60 to zero testing and did that five times in a row, and I did it with my big brake kit versus my regular, same pad, same tires, eventually the big brake kit's going to stop shorter because the smaller brakes are overwhelmed with heat. That's all it is. It's a heat management thing. That's it. Uh, the, the leverage that you're getting while there, it's slightly more, but it's not enough to really worry about versus heat. So my big brake kit, it's a 350 millimeter by 34 millimeter wide rotor versus like a 312 by 26 or something like that. So you can see there's a massive volumetric difference going to a big brake kit for just handling heat. So they handle heat better. Um, if you go to the mountains and you had a, even a street pad with a big brake kit, yes, you're going to resist fade more than if you had a stock brake. But, you know, spending three to $5,000 on a set of brakes for just driving around on the street is kind of silly when you can just, you know, get some brake pads and fluid and probably do the same thing for most people. You know, finally, look, the aesthetics of a big brake kit, if you have really nice wheels, I get it. And I'm not going to talk about that because that's an individual thing and if that's what you want and you think they look cool they do look cool get big brakes but if you're talking about braking performance i would say that is on the bottom of the list to worry about next uh braking technique is you know a lot of people don't understand that it's not just well just push the brakes dude um if you're soft braking dragging the pedal more in the mountains or on the track you are going to overheat your brakes because you're braking more so what's the the ideal situation is you basically brake hard and for as short a period of time as you can. So you get all your braking done at one time and get off the brakes because the more you're off the brakes, the more time they have to cool down between braking events. So like, again, I'll go to the tail of the dragon because that's what a lot of people are doing with their cars that are enthusiasts. Every turn, you're going to brake, you're going to turn, you're going to accelerate, and you're going to repeat that like 300 times. The more you're on the brakes the quicker your brakes are going to fade. So getting the braking done, using the grip in your tires to turn and not soft footing or soft, you know, dragging the brake softly into each turn is going to help immensely. And a very competent driver can probably drive on just straight up street car on the tail of the dragon way faster than you on a set of stock brakes. So just remember that there is a skill here that you have to think about when you're um, doing this and, you know, going to events like autocross or HPDE or something to learn how to do better braking is important and will help you uh, save your brakes when you're 
uh, in the mountains or on the track. Okay, so brake size, whatever we talked about, that's probably the least of your, that's the bottom of the list. Braking technique is very important. That will help save your brakes. The next thing we're going to talk about is fluid and pads. Um, I'll talk about just quickly on fluid and then I'll, I'll, I'll hit it on my little chart here, but then we're going to finish with just a, a longer discussion on brake pads. So uh, brake fluid, you're going to the mountains, factory fresh fluid, just or fresh whatever OE fluid you have is really all you need. It's unlikely that you're going to boil your brakes in the mountains or boil your brake fluid. Um, the way brake fluid works, you'll see two numbers. You'll see dry boiling point and wet boiling point. And what that means is that when the fluid is brand new and fresh, there's no moisture in it. Brake fluid is hygroscopic. It absorbs moisture. So as fluid gets older, it becomes more, quote, wet, and your boiling point will drop because water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius uh, versus the brake fluid, which has a much higher boiling point. So the more water that's a component of your brake fluid, the less, uh, the less heat it will handle before it boils. And when you boil your fluid, you get a soft pedal, uh, and of course, you can die. So... <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so fresh fluid is really the important part. You know, the, the on the Volkswagens, it's the, the DOT4 stuff. Again, any basic uh, DOT4 brake fluid that's fresh before you go to the mountains is going to work for most people just fine. Now, you can also, you can get that, um, so yeah, your dry boiling point might be, I don't know, 500 degrees Fahrenheit, and your wet boiling point might be 400 degrees. And if you get into the race fluids or track fluids, those fluids might have a dry boiling point when they're fresh of 600 or more. And so that's really the difference. The problem with those high-end fluids is they absorb moisture even faster than the factory stuff. And so like what I use, this Motul RBF 600, kind of about a 600 degree dry boiling point, I have to change it every time I go to the track because it absorbs moisture um, and you won't get the performance out of it. So fresh brake fluid is key. If you want, if you're going to the track, you should be running a higher temperature fluid than the factory stuff. And we'll talk a little bit about some of the brands there that, that give you that higher dry boiling point and higher wet boiling point too, because you know, you're going to get some moisture in your fluid. So the more resistant that is to dropping that temperature by larger amounts, the better off you are. So that's the brake fluid and then brake pads. Brake pads are actually what most people, most people should be able to go to the tail of the dragon and drive at a reasonable clip with a good set of brake pads and some fresh brake fluid and good braking technique. That's really all you need. Uh, a lot of people don't seem to believe that, but it is the truth. So on my board here, I have a little bit of a, like a chart, like a continuum. And I have on the left side, we've got pure street. You're just driving to the grocery store. And on the other side, we have full-blown endurance racing, like, you know, brakes, brake pads that need to last for 8, 12, 24 hours. Okay. And in the middle, we have, I've kind of broken it down into a little more than street, we're going to call it the tail of the dragon. And then we're going to kind of go noob HPDE. So you're starting off to do a few track days. You've got the advanced HPDE. Now you've gotten better, faster, and you might even be doing time trials where you're really pushing the car. And then against the, uh, the, the far right is endurance racing. So, all right. Basically, the way this works is for street pads, they're going to be low cost, low dust, low noise. They're going to have a really good bite right from cold. So you back out of your driveway and they grab hard, uh, but they're not going to resist fade for, or, or manage heat as well. And they're going to be really easy on your rotors. This is almost every car that basic cars that come from the factory, because for most people, this is what they want. For, a, for some of the pad names that, that people run for street use, you know, you got your straight up OE or equivalents, you know, that at the, the auto parts store, you got a lot of these ceramic pads or very low dust. And you might even throw this in a very popular pad, EBC Red Stuff. EBC Red Stuff are street pads. That's it. They're kind of a higher performance, quote unquote, ceramic. I think they, it's an Aramid ceramic. I don't know. I think they're worthless. <laughs> they're, they're just not a, they cost, for what they are, they cost a lot and don't really give you a lot, okay? And for brake fluid, just whatever the factory recommends, you know, Volkswagens, it's dot four, whatever brand, doesn't really matter. So this is basically, you're driving to the grocery store, you're driving normally. This is where a lot of people live or want to live, but they're using this. So this is different, now, if you're going to the tail of the dragon and you're driving hard, okay, you need something better, I think, than these type of pads. 
first off, the other thing I want to mention, I have no affiliation with anybody. I don't really care what kind of brand you use. Every brand has different pad compounds. So I just know some common names and that's what I've thrown up. I'm not recommending anything. You do your own homework. One that's popular, Hawk HPS. That's high performance street. And then the Hawk HPS 5.0. I think these are aimed at slightly heavier muscle cars. Uh, the other one I actually really like and used on my car, my son's car, EVC yellow stuff. Notice that this is not for track. This is a street pad. It's a You're getting more dust, maybe get a little bit more noise, but you're also going to start increasing your fade resistance. Um, the easy on the rotors thing, you're probably not going to have any issue with rotor, uh, rotor issues until you're over here. Okay. Um, and then in this kind of, you're, you, you're a noob, you want to go try uh, track driving. A popular one is Ferrodo DS2500. There's EVC blue stuff if you like the colored EVC pads. Carbotech and G-Lock are very popular, and their compounds would be like the six to eight numbers when you look at their website. For fluids, you're probably going to now look at this Motul RBF600. That's what I've been using, but I'll be making a change. And another popular one is ATE uh, Type 200. So these are going to give you a little higher dry boiling point and wet boiling point. Um, you're going to have to change these a little more frequently, maybe annually for normal drivers for the track. I mean, I'm changing this every time. Um, so that's where I think a lot of people want to be, but they end up over here for some odd reason. They think that this stuff will work. And again, a really good driver, professional driver can go send it way faster than you could ever drive on the Tilla Dragon running street stuff on a stock car. So remember that driver skill is a big deal. Okay, so that's, uh, now we're moving over. Now we're getting a bit more advanced. Now we're talking about, uh, you know, maybe time trials, things like that. Um, there's going to be some crossover here, but I think once you get to this point, you probably need to have a rethink of your braking pads and uh, your brake pads and brake fluid. So I just, again, I'm writing some names I know. I've run these EBC RP1 and X. They've worked fantastic for me. They're just not really durable. They're not lasting in terms of durability is what I mean. I'm only getting a couple days out of these. Carbotech G-Lock, that's kind of their 10 to 12 compounds. Um, for fluids, now you're talking about maybe like Castrol SRF, Willwood XR, Endless RF6 or RF650. Modal makes a 650 and a 700. You've moved over a little bit in the fluid game. You're going to be running a more aggressive pad. Now you're getting more dust, more noise. Um... And now we're going to actually start to have issues with potentially issues with cold bite. So you leave your neighborhood with these pads in, they're squealing like crazy, and they don't actually stop that great until they're warm. It's not really good pads to run on the street. You're also going to chew your rotors up. If you're running pads like this on the street where your temperatures are actually pretty low in your braking system, you're, it's like a rotor lathe, a friend of mine said. You're just chewing your rotors up. So if you're going to start over here in your street car, you need to start basically swapping these in before you go to the track and when you get home and run something over on that side of the of the scale for daily use. Um, and then finally, you know, the, the full-blown endurance racing, you know, that's not probably going to be a street car. That's going to be a caged race car you tow. There's a ton of them. Paget RSL, I think 29 is a popular one, or they have some different compounds. The Raybestos ST43s, PFC 08s, Carbotech and G-Lock go all the way up, I think, to 20. For Roto DS11311, I have a friend runs these, loves them. Uh, EBC makes some centered pads that are supposed to be uh, endurance pads. Uh, yeah, so that that's really how this works. But I just I want to say again, if you want to go and do this business in the mountains and you're running on this side of the scale and you're breaking, your skill is average, you're a normal person that probably has never been on a track before, man, you need to get some better pads. I wouldn't go anything less than these. And, and probably actually this Ferrodo is a good one, either the yellow stuff or the Ferrodo DS2500s. Um, and if the dust bothers you because you got your, your tricked out, you know, BBS three piece wheels or whatever, that's fine. Just change them. It doesn't take long to change brake pads. Put these in, go do your thing, come home, swap them out. Uh, get some fresh fluid. I would run at a minimum this type 200 um, or the 600 fluid and be sure to at least change it once a year. So that's really it. Again, Brake size is a heat issue. You don't need a big brake kit to go driving on the street. The braking technique, get on them, get off them. Don't drag your feet. Brake hard uh, and, and late. <laughs> uh, brake fluid, we talked a little bit about the boiling point stuff and what how the fluid changes as you go up the scale here. But fresh fluid is really the key regardless. And then we just spent a lot of time talking about brake pad compounds and how it's important to choose the right compound 
And as much as these are marketed, like Red Stuff is the popular one, as being aggressive street pads, buddy, they are not aggressive street pads. The yellow stuff is where you would want to start if you're in the EBC game or maybe the Ferodo. Peace.